Yay Networks. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Fittish Podcast here at Fittish Headquarters. Welcome. Is that what we're going to call this? We're redoing the HQ. space, you see? Yeah, no, it looks amazing. Yeah, I always like sharing with the podcast audience first. We are redoing a little bit of the space, you know, nothing crazy. I don't have all the money in the world by any means. I don't really have much money at all. But we are kind of revamping it because we've noticed a lot of people want to like come in, store and shop. And this has never really been a store. It's a sort of a hybrid space of sorts, you know, like a workout room and... We don't warehouse everything out of here, but we do a lot of our, you know, kind of gifting to I don't really work with a lot of influencers. But, you know, when we do gifting and stuff, we have the team do it out of here. But it's our office space. It's nice. But I wanted a room that we could we're going to have some new exciting things to talk about later. We're going to pop open and hopefully make this more of like a retail store that y'all can come shop. I mean, it's only in Dallas for now. But, yeah, come in person. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's looking great. I like the change of colors. That we painted. I know yeah. I haven't really shown any photos yet. Do you like the, so new, cool. the new desk? Yes, the desk looks amazing. Made out of tennis balls. Very so artisanal. Cool. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I think it's going to be a total success, babe. I think so, too. Uh, but Francisco and I, before you got here today, I was talking with our producer because he has a baby. And I always just, I like talking to other parents. You know, one of the ideas you submitted today for content topics for the show is something that I wanted to talk about too. So we're Which aligning one? on that. Um, well, we'll let about, it for later. Just about like kind of friendships and oh, yeah. parenting. Yeah, the other one, I don't know. Are you referring to, do I have some? No, no, no. Um, so I was reading these, but we'll go into it. But we will go into it in a second. That yeah. sounds good. But I was telling our producer... There's just so many things, right? I know we say this all the time, but for those of you that are parents and have been parents for a long time or trying to become parents or you may one day be, I just like giving you all a heads up or just kind of, you know, talking about our problems. But I uh, commiserating, I guess we could say, commiserating without hearing what you have to say back for now, but you always give us nice feedback. I think that the concept of just like not knowing what, to do with your child. Sometimes, you know, they develop so quickly overnight. They wake up and I'm sure you have this conversation with your significant other all the time. You're like, wow, I think they grew last night. You know, you can tell that they're different. They look different. Their mannerisms are different and they just grow so fucking quickly. It's It's like a tadpole. Tadpole it is. It's like you put them in water and they grow. But it makes it hard to keep up with. Like, you know, I've just emailed a school that I have to be, you know, I'm trying to get them on the wait list set because I submitted a check a week ago. They tell you once they process the check, they let you know that you're confirmed on the wait list and I haven't heard. Uh, you know, so these things pop in your head. And I'm like, there's just so many things. The point of all of this is there's so many things that I wish that I knew that come at every stage, right? Like, I wish I knew how hard, you know, the fourth trimester, as they call it, would be. I wish I knew how hard it would be on my identity, how hard it would be on our personal relationship. You know, um, I guess people can't really prepare you for it. But I also wish I kind of knew developmentally like, wow, all of a sudden your kid's going to wake up and he cannot stay at home. (laughs) He is going to have to go do some activities all day, every day in order to be tired and entertained and not bored and not a monster. And that just happens so quickly, you know, and that's the stage that we're at right now. So I'm constantly looking for things to do, of course, which costs money, right? But that is why on Monday, I just up and decided to book him a class at the little gym, you know, one of those, well, it's exactly what it says, it's a little gym. And if you've never seen one of these, it's kind of what you would envision if you said, oh, it's like a miniature gym. It literally is like if you did gymnastics when you were younger, they have everything in there. It's all soft play, but it's all miniature. And this experience was so funny to me. Like, it was just so unanticipated. I I don't even know how to describe it in a way. I've told you about it a little bit, but I, and it kind of bridges the whole conversation about making mom friends too, but I, um, it was, it was, it was weird and funny in the best way, not in a negative way, but uh, just kind of how swim class has been, but even more structured, but they structure it in like two minute increments, you know, because kids have no attention spans. But this was Remy's first class. And I felt overwhelmed, you know, to say the least, because I'm in there and 
you know, when we go to swim, sometimes we're like the only person in yeah. the pool or there's like one or two other moms. Yeah, it's or dads. like a very crowded class. This was like 14 or 15 moms and one dad. All the kids are 10 to 18 months old. Um, people were nice. You know, when I first get there, like I, I'm really outgoing. I like to be overly friendly and just like say hello. I mean, I don't really think I'm good at the dating which I like to call it because it's like dating to find like new mom friends. But I am nice. You know, I like to I talk a lot, obviously. So I like to talk and introduce myself and say hi. And um, most all the moms I met, like half of them, I guess, that were early before class, they were super nice. And some of them knew each other because they had been going to the same class, you know, or some of them are pregnant again and obviously have known each other for a long time. So, you know, there's this whole thing. And I just kind of look around or I'll see some moms that are probably more shy, kind of keeping to themselves. But Remy, man, like he was overstimulated in, I want to say the best way, but also like he was like a different person. He did not pay attention to me. He was running around the whole place at some point. I don't know if I told you this. He was like trying to escape because he saw my mom went with me. He saw grandma sitting on the other side of the glass. He's flirting with like a 10 year old girl that was waiting on her sibling who was in the class. Like, so he's staring out the glass. I mean, he was just not he was all over the place. And I'm kind of trailing behind him because I thought, I don't know what he's going to get into. I mean, I don't know if it's just me, but Fran does not like what I'm about to say. I already know it. But I know that I'm not alone in this. OK, Fran just doesn't like it. And I understand why. But I am I often say, like, our child is either like very smart or special in a sort of way, right? You always have those moments where you're like, is he smart? Is this normal behavior? Is something going on with him? Is this an early sign of autism? You know, is there, you know, you always kind of have this like, I'm just curious and you pay attention, right? And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I actually saw Jennifer Lawrence like say this during an interview the other day. She's like, I can't tell you how much my partner and I look at our child. I think she had a baby right when we did. And she's like, he's either like really smart or like something's going on and I'm not sure. But that's how I feel because he's like under the balance beam, twist and screws. And so I said to the instructor, I'm like, I just didn't know like if he was going to get hurt or, you know, and she goes, everywhere in here is safe. And we encourage the moms and the parents to stay on the mat and do the activities as planned. And, you know, it's clear that Remy is what we call a wanderer. <laughs> and at some point after multiple classes, he will learn and he will start coming back to the group but you just let them go explore. I mean, he explored every corner of that place. He brings me like the tiniest piece of dirt and hands it to me. I don't even know where he finds half this shit, you know? So yeah, it was super fun. Um, He was just, and he was like hyped. Like I felt like he had like done crack that night. Like he did not want to go to bed. He was, I thought he'd be tired because I mean, we did somersaults. We ran around. He was just like on a drug that night, I think from adrenaline because it was so, such like a crazy experience, I guess, yeah. that like we could, didn't even get him to bed until like 10 o'clock the other night. But, yeah. We started like, what time? I got home at 530. You were already putting him to bed. Like we started so early and then we went, but yeah, we went to like 10, like 930, 10. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it was about 6.30. I was putting him to bed a little early because he seemed tired. It didn't work. But the class was so funny. I met a nice mom. And at one point in the class, I see out of the corner of my eye, this mom's doing like a round off back handspring on the mat. And I was like, what just happened? My mom said it was so funny, like watching me in the class, like watching Remy, watching all the other kids, like kids having a meltdown. That mom, like obviously is a gymnastics pro. So I was like, man, I am like, I'm exhausted. Just I think those are the type of moms that just want to show up. Like when you go to a yoga class and oh. the people just popped into a a handstand ride when the but you know what? class I can't, starts. I know like, what you mean, but I can't lag. blame her because I can't blame her because if I had been out there playing soccer, I'd probably do the same thing because that's like one of the only athletic skills I have. Like I'd juggle the ball or I'd do something, I guess. I don't know, man. I was tired, but she was just having fun. Obviously, she did gymnastics and her little girl I was in you juggling something. the ball. Soccer? Yeah. You haven't? I haven't. I've never seen you juggle. Yeah. yeah. You can juggle... Probably not as good as I used to, but like I bet you are thousands. I remember thousands. Yeah, amazing. I think if I the just highest I ever got amazing. to is like a couple thousand because I counted in my backyard. I was an only child. I would go in my backyard every day and kick the soccer ball against the wall for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, we had a brick wall in the backyard. It was actually awesome. Wow. I would just go on the deck and kick the ball and trap it and kick it. I was really good at soccer. Yeah, yeah, I could juggle really well. Probably not anymore. I mean, not thousands, but yeah. 
anyway, I think it's just, I loved it. I mean, so I'm excited. And then I like, kind of want to go back to the same one again to see some of the same moms and stuff. And I think it probably just takes time of like being around moms. And, but, you know, I posted a TikTok this morning, Fran, because, and this was like a topic you submitted. And, Guys are just different, right? I mean, we already know this. And I talk to my girlfriends about it. Guys are just different in so many ways when it comes to everything. So it's kind of hard because I just feel like guys, you know, guys could be like fucked over by a friend, for instance, and just be like, oh, whatever, he's going through something, you know, like guys, which is great. Like guys just brush stuff off. I don't find that they tend to hold grudges as much in general. And um, it's just an example, you know, when it comes to friendships. Meanwhile, like, I just don't feel that way. You know, I'm like, if you like, show me like something that's kind of like shitty. I'm usually like keep my distance a little bit because I'm like, I don't have time to deal with that shit, you know. But I think this whole concept of like making mom friends is really challenging. And I've tried to have a good outlook on it. Like, you know, it's exciting also because it's an opportunity to make new friends. I think as we get older, especially going through, think about from your 20s, to your 30s and then 30s to now, you know, being almost 40, you go through a lot in life and you definitely, I have a lot of, I'm just, I would like to bring this up, Fran, because I have a lot of women write me about friendships. And so I think it's important for people to like not feel alone because I think that you do lose friends as years go on for different reasons. And, um, and I think becoming a mom, it's made it really clear that it's just hard because I have some really close friends and, you know, friends that I've been close with for, I don't know, probably 13, 14 years. And but they had kids before me and we've kind of grown apart over the years. I mean, we're still close. Like if I called and needed something, we're still friends. We live in the same city, but at the same time, you know, they have kids that are older, right? So they have friends that are like that they meet through school and through activities. So I think you become friends with other people. I hate to say out of convenience, but it makes sense. Like you want to be friends with your neighbors. You want to be friends with people where your kids can like go in each other's yards and play together and get along. And it just makes life easier from a parenting perspective. So you kind of gravitate towards people that are in the same timeline as you, I guess. And you've had some friends that you've reconnected with, which has been nice, like friends that yeah, I never even 100%. met of yours because they had kids the same time we did, which was funny because you hadn't really been as close with them for many years. So I think that's a really important subject and I'm glad we're talking about it. Like, yeah, so I've had very different group of friends yeah. which i stay somewhat in touch with all of them i think i have i had a lot of older friends and i had people like the people that we were talking about we lived together when i first moved to dallas and i bought my house and we've always kind of stay in touch but right now child's uh, babies have reconnected us and it's so amazing but this weekend i went out with a group of friends that I haven't seen also in a while that I haven't hanged out in that level. Like we've seen them with, the, they also have babies, but I was thinking about that. Like I, I was so tempted. They called me and like, Hey, we're going to do this, something very simple, nothing out of the ordinary, but we're going to have these couple of plans. Do you want to join? And I always fall into temptation of saying, you know what? No, like I'm comfortable at home. I want to put my baby to sleep. Yeah. Which no, is, I told you to go, though. And uh, It makes sense. And I was like, you know what? I need to harvest these relationships. I, want, I need to be able to keep these friendships and nourish them. So I went, and it was great, but you realize how easy it is to fall in the trap of your own nest and you... And, Forget about those people that have been around you the longest. Forget about those people that have supported you, that are your friends, that have been with you through many stages of your life. Yeah, you've had some really good friends, you know, and I have too. I think I just, I grow apart from people and I've accepted that, you know, I've never been someone, I've, I don't know, there's just something about me that I don't like the, having 20 or 30 friends because I think it's bullshit. I don't think... Um, you know, Fran has different levels of friends that, you know, you 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 call everyone a best friend when we first started dating. It was so confusing to me because I'm like, you're calling this person one of your closest friends. We've been together for four years and I've never met them. And so for me, like, I just don't use that kind of terminology like best friend, you know, I 
But I get it. You've had some great friends that you've had for a long time. And you also don't have like probably the level of pressure on a friendship that maybe I as a flaw probably put, you know, because I just have like maybe a certain different expectation. Like I would rather, for instance, have it's probably the only trial in me. Like I would rather have just a few close girlfriends that, you know, I may not see very much. And uh, but I know if we text and connect like we're there and it's like we kind of pick up where we left off. And I think it's hard because. I have just found it where I'm at a crossroads, right? I'm at this weird place of like, I, you know, you meet women now. I mean, making new friends is hard, right? And I suck. Like it takes, it takes two, like you got to make effort, but where does that effort, how, right? Like, and then how do you know when you put the effort in, it's like dating that it's even going to be worth your while, right? Like as you get older, you're kind of like what you're saying in a different way. Like I kind of feel the same way, like between working full time and momming, when do you even have the time to make these friends? You know, like I definitely so I have made some new friends in the last few years that I really like and I will hang out with once or twice a month, not, you know, at night partying because that's just not like really what I do. But, you know, for lunch and things like that, working out and that's been nice. And some of them don't have kids. And of course, there's an element we all know when you don't have kids, they just don't 100 percent understand it. And um, but then, you know, then, like I said, some of the people I've grown apart from, you know, that did have kids way before I did. Maybe it's this kind of age because then I get around a lot of new women that have babies my the, Remy's age. They're so much younger than me. <laughs> They're so much younger than me, which is OK. <laughs> you know, I don't have any issue with that. I knew that was going to be the case. But then once you're in it, it's like, you know, but you don't know. And then you're in it and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, since I'm meeting these women, I have this weird hybrid. Like I work full time, but I'm also able to do stuff in the afternoon with Remy. I meet women that, you know, they're stay at home moms. And so they're like out, you know, at these play centers and doing stuff every day. And then it's hard, too, because it can be hard to find stuff in common. Or how do you even know if we parent the same? You know, like I have this fear that I'm all of a sudden going to like become friends with some mom and then be like, God, she's like hardcore, you know, like different parenting values. Because then I think it's just I don't know. I don't like I absolutely understand what you're saying. It's the expectations that you have of friendships and how much they're going to influence you. So I think we always hover around the people that are more like us. Yeah. And I think that's great. And something that I, I also hovered is I've been very focused on that. I've been very focused on dedicating my time to harvest those relationships that are not as much as like I am, that they are, more of what I want to be like people that are great at what they do. People that are motivated, people that are great parents. Yeah. So I think that's the people like I, I reserve my time and I will keep reserving my time for those people. I love that. And I totally agree with you because then you become a parent and then you look at other people you knew that were parents before you and I were and as much as you're like, I don't want to judge, you kind of do because you're kind of like, wait, like you're not 100 percent there as a parent. And the, so the, that's what I mean yeah. about parenting values. Like you like people that are really present and they're there, but they also are maybe more. Yeah, they're just priorities are different, you know, than the kind of standard just partying all the time or whatever it is. And so it's just kind of actually changed. Though That's what I mean. It's changed the whole landscape of like friendship in general and what's important. And um yeah, I don't know. I guess I just it's it can be it can be challenging, you know, to just find that. And there's an element that's kind of like, wow, you never think about that when you have a baby, like how much it's going to change the dynamic of friendships. And obviously, a lot of us don't have a whole lot of time, you know, a whole lot of time. I felt a lot of hurt, to be totally honest. I felt a lot of hurt. And I've talked to you about this, about, you know, a few friends. I pulled back with friendships over the years for a lot of reasons, you know, and I don't know if it's something I've ever talked about, but you know, when when Kid died, um, it was really an interesting dynamic. And I think just as an example, any of you that have been through like a, a tragedy or a real trauma when you've lost someone really close to you in your life, isn't it terrible and fascinating, if that can be both, um, how people respond in a time of need? And I felt incredibly disappointed by people at that time. And that I think is something I've never told you um, is a reason why I went from having a very large group of friends, friends, you know, in, in air quotes, like to a very small group of 
friends. Um, very few that are not even friends with each other, you know, because I just don't like, I've never cared to have a group. And I think that's wonderful for a lot of you that it's like, Oh, I've had the same friends since childhood. That's incredible. That's super cool. Um, I just moved a lot more. So I just wasn't able to kind of maintain. I mean, I still have high school and college girlfriends that I talk to occasionally, but not, you know, like that. And they're all, they also live in the same city and they're all still friends. Like I, of course I'm not going to be in that circle anymore. You know, they literally all live in the same place that we all grew up. And I'm kind of the odd one out in that. And so, you know, we're just not as close. But anyway, I felt a lot of hurt. And it was interesting when that happened because I got stronger friendships out of it. People that just knew, you know, how to handle that. Like I had a college girlfriend who texted me every day for like six months. Hey, how are you today? How are you doing? Just that's it. Just every day. They're like, because she knew I was probably really not fucking okay, you know? And I just thought that was so amazing, just the way certain people responded at a time like that, that I didn't even think about the the like kind of carnage that follows a tragedy in your life with friends. And sure, a lot of people don't know how to handle stuff like that. So they get uncomfortable and they don't want to talk about it. But then you have friends that you're like, I gave you free concert tickets to like everything all the time. And you don't even text me to like see if I'm OK or what happened. It's so fucked up, you know. And that just changed a lot of friendships for me. And so, yeah, maybe I do put too much pressure on friendships in general. But I just feel that if I'm a really good friend and I'm really loyal and I go through, I mean, how many things like that do we go through in our life? Hopefully only a couple, you know, really major things, you know, but that's what friendships are to me. I actually don't care if you're fun to hang out with when we're drinking. That's easy. There's a lot of people that are fun to hang out with when times are good, when vacations are there and when like there's just fun happening. But what about postpartum? What about tragedy? What about horrible breakups? You know, what about people when you're being bullied? You know, things like that. You know, you want people that are there for you. And I just think you learn a lot about people in a time of need. And so, yeah, I was just really disappointed over the years by people I thought were better friends than they were. And that doesn't mean there was any drama for me. You know, it's not like I had all these confrontations. You know, it's really only been like a few Friends, but friends that I thought I was good to and friends that I was close to that I just felt that maybe I would have handled things differently than they did. And that's it, you know, and I handled it in a way that was honestly just kind of like I never just I never said anything about it. And, you know, if they weren't making effort and I wasn't making effort, you just kind of grow apart. And there was never any drama. And I never talked poorly about people because it's like. But it is a shame. You know, it is a shame. And I think that I just learned, unfortunately, the hard way, like. I was way too trusting and way too open and really wanted friends being growing up an only child. I always craved kind of a sisterhood that was never like inherently built in for me. And I've now looked at motherhood as like, wow, A, it's wonderful to start our own little family. It's been exciting for me. And um, but also kind of, wow, there needs to be more support for us moms out there because I know I'm not alone in that. You know, I get a lot of messages from women and I know that we need more support in a way to kind of find friends. Not that motherhood friends are always going to work out great either. And I'm sure it's a whole nother ball game when kids are in school. And I hear it all the time, like, oh my God, you're going to have this group of moms. You're going to have this group of moms. You're going to have the moms with nothing to do. And they're mean to the other moms. And I know it's the same old shit just in another cycle, you know, but I still wish there were more things built in for us, especially in this period of time before kids start school, because, you know, all we want to do is kind of talk about our kids and what's going on and not talk about our kids, talk about our relationships, right? Like you can't talk to Fran about what we're fighting about every day, you know, you kind of want to talk to another woman about it going through her relationship issues. You know, like Danny and I do that because, you know, you and her husband are very different, um, but we're both new moms and we all, you know, we have similar but different issues, you know, and it's nice because you just want to talk about it to feel like you're not alone, if that makes sense. Like, wow, like a lot of men handle stuff this way and whether it's venting or just laughing about it or in a way it's positive because it makes you feel better. It makes you be like, Oh my gosh, you know, my problems aren't that, that like, you know, you don't do this or you know what I'm saying, not in a negative way, but just like a, it's just nice to feel some sense of normalcy that what you're going through is normal. And anyway, I think we need to start like a fetish mom walk or get support together group. a support group. I know you always joke about it, but no, yes. I'm not joking about it, babe. I think everybody needs support. Yes, support in a way that is, um, yeah, but like a, I've, I've been wanting to do a fittish mom get together, not because as a selfishly, I'm like, I want to make 100 mom friends. No, I wouldn't be good with 100 friends. I want to connect women so other women can meet other women, you know, and I think that happens sometimes up here, but I think it could be really nice just to, you know, it gives you an excuse to get out with your child 
you know, because you want to spend time with your child. Like you said, you don't want to just leave them and go like party. Like you want to spend time with them, but you also want to, but it makes it hard because we just don't, how do you find the time when you hardly have the time, but you have to make the time to foster friendships, um, for your own sanity. And yeah, it's, I think it's just, it's it's a struggle. So anyway, that's kind of where my head's at. If y'all have any ideas, but yeah, I think I'm going to start some kind of like, uh, well, it has to be like 8 a.m. It's so damn hot. But yeah, yeah, like a once or twice a month walk where we can get together and kind of connect. That way, use my platform to just let women come out and hopefully people can kind of meet and find each other. No, I think that's an amazing idea. And I think you said a keyword that is fostering. Um, I think it's really important to see the expectations that we have from friends and make sure that we're fulfilling the other way around. That we are yeah. also there for them. That yeah. we are also calling them if they're going through hardship. Like I think it's really important to understand that this is a two-way street. And I agree with you because I think, and you've helped put me in check on that. I think it can be easy to get caught up. You know, for instance, the friend, some of the friends I refer to that I'm still friends with, I just don't see as much anymore, you know, because they have kids in a different stage of life and I have no, like, I love them. It's more, you know... Um, you realize when you become a parent that we all have so much shit going on, right? So yeah. it's like, yeah. So I've started to kind of make a point to like every other week or so, like send a text, check in, you know, I think it just takes more planning. How are y'all doing? How's everything going? Because you're absolutely right. Like a lot of people who knows what they have going on, you kind of, we're all kind of drowning in our day to day. And once you yeah. start a family. And as everybody said, we're going through a battle that nobody knows and everybody. So we just have to be there for our inner circle. I think that's really well said in a different, you know, in a different topic than what we talk about lately with relationship help and whatnot, you know, better help is a sponsor of the Fittish podcast and uh, just another scenario, you know, uh, another reason to go to therapy is if you have been struggling with friendships. I think we talk about therapy a lot as just like personal if you're feeling depressed or if you're fighting with your significant other, but there's so many other reasons to seek therapy. And yeah, Time. Yeah, I know you're going to say time and money are the biggest issues at hand, which is absolutely accurate. And that's why BetterHelp is such a wonderful service, because it's more affordable than other in-person therapies out there. Uh, it's also it feels even more accessible, right? Because you can just like get online and find, you know, get matched up with a therapist really quickly in just a couple of days and you can change your therapist. You don't have to turn your camera on if you really don't want to get that personal and uh, cause it's such a vulnerable thing to kind of say I'm ready and I need to seek some help with an area of my life that I'm struggling with. And Fran and I have both utilized better help, you know, together and separately for different, um, reasons and different things going on in our life. Find more balance with better help. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give better help a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Again, all you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Fittish today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Fittish. I forgot I what else. The what? Oh, I just said this is so accurate. I totally forgot what I what else I wanted to talk about on the show today. But then I just remembered and it's how fucking stupid we've gotten as parents, which is so funny. I posted you the other day. We had such a great weekend activity, in my opinion, but I just have such an affinity for animals. So I love it. Like I would love to have a little farm. And I sought out a farm this weekend and the morning started off rough. Like Fran had gotten up with Remy really early. You were in like crank city mood, I remember. And I just hate that. You know, I just it drives me crazy with our own issues. Like when Fran's in a bad mood, he just like, I don't know, like you'll deny that you're in a bad mood, but you're super short with me and you don't talk to me the entire like hour car ride. And I'm annoyed because it's like Sunday and I'm like, family time. Like I want to hang out and talk, you know, and you were just, you know, I, I know everyone goes through that, but we show up to this little place that I had found. Um, and yeah, it, it was a toss up. I didn't know how it was going to be. I didn't even know if they were for sure going to be open. I tried calling. No one answered. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go today. And Fran's going to be so mad if we drive all the way here and Remy misses his nap and it's closed, but it ended up being opened. And I think it's open like every Saturday, Sunday without yeah. fail, unless it gets too hot. They close early, but no, this- no, no, from, from, I think they open at around nine, 10 from nine to 11. I think you see the animals and from one to six, you have a barbecue because they're all cooked after. Yeah, it was pretty hot. Yeah. So. 
this place, this Kathy's Critters in Princeton, Texas was so cute. And I was just obsessed. I don't know. I, I feel like I was more obsessed than you were. But like, I loved you it. You were more obsessed than Remy and I. But that is like, he was so crazy uh, obsessed also with all the animals. I think that he loved it. He was definitely overwhelmed. It was hot, but we went early and I don't know, you know, you go to things like this or like the zoo, for instance, has a little petting zoo area. They're pretty strict on it, like two in, two out, you know, don't pet the hind. Like this was just like free willing it. Oh, yeah. I mean, so many different areas. Open and close the gate yourself. I'm picking up baby piglets. They had like a litter of kittens that everyone seemed really excited about. I don't care about free kittens. kittens. I don't care about free kittens. Like I'm here. Like there's some there's some cow hybrids. Like there was some kind of guinea pig looking thing. Like I don't know. Some of the stuff looked like it wanted baby. No, no, the no. Other. Uh, after like what happened after night? There is an orgy. Like there's like <laughs> animals with all their species. Like yeah, like snake that comes guinea pig looking and... thing looked like it was like part kangaroo, part yeah, guinea pig. Yeah, 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 yeah. no. There's, there's I mean, I'm not saying that in a bad way. Like, I don't know what those little cows were. Well, they were mixed with the dogs. No, no. I, there were, we didn't even get to some of the stuff they had. I absolutely loved it. They I want to have a party in the fall. I want to see if I can like rent and we can go hang out there or do something. What I'm definitely going to have a party there. Oh, I've already thought of the theme. I was thinking like, I, uh, I was thinking about doing something along the lines. I haven't quite narrowed it down, but I think I want to do something that's like, 1880 boo and it's like like 1882 like the show you know so it's like like retro like way back wild west wild west themed get a photographer to do like old school wild west photos you know and then just like let the kids play and like have a little fall party out there isn't that a good idea that's amazing you think they'd let me rent it out and do that we could actually like sell some tickets and like give it to you know give the money to charity Mm. once we cover our cost of having a party That'd be cool. I don't know. That's my idea. I'm giving it away. No, that's early. amazing for sure. I think we should do it. But like, have again, everybody needs to experience activity. this place. It's amazing. They had some reptiles and like everyone there that was helping out was so nice. And I don't know. I just really liked it. Like it was just really cool. We didn't even see everything. They have pony rides and horseback rides you can schedule. But I absolutely loved it. But this is something I try to tell Fran. Like the baby stuff takes planning. Like it's almost like I don't even think he realizes that I'm like okay. Mondays now is going to be little gym or this day's swim and this day's this. And it's been so hard to stay on a schedule because, you know, kids like refuse to stay on a schedule and some days they don't feel good. So you don't want to take them out in public. And but it's hard just trying to find stuff to do. So I loved that. I think that's another one to maybe do, you know, again, once a month. No, fine. I'll go. I'll take him alone next time. No, he's the one that says fall. There wasn't one loved it he absolutely loved it the day before we went to like a little market i'm trying i feel like brand sometimes is like i do i feel like you're like Mwah. but i'm like it's so what you're gonna look back at these photos of places that we've been you dancing with remy and like at the little like market party we went to and then you know going to the critters and playing and even though like in the moment you were tired or maybe didn't really want to go you're gonna look back and be like these are like cold oh no babe i'm all about to doing things with him for sure 100 percent. some things are better than others you know heat is the one that kills me but the heat is here the heat is part of this relationship like i do not know why we live here it is so fucking hot but like we can't be inside all the time like i we have to go do things what do we do Oh, we'll go place with AC. I mean, everyone deals with this, you know. It's hot, and indoor we, we were, activity. We were indoor, right indoor, a tattoo shop party. Oh, that was amazing. And it had air and no drinks complaints and a DJ. That. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah, zero complaints. I just think, yeah, it is hot, and so you got to get up and do stuff during the day. I mean, that's part of it. Like we live in Texas. It's well, Remy and I, we are early birds. Yeah. We, I mean, unfortunately, not everything's open at six a.m. Target. No, it's not. Seven. Yeah. Think about how many times you've been to Target and you forget. But when we were leaving, the whole point of this is like how dumb parenting has made us in general. Like I forget. And I used to have such a steel trap of a memory, you know, like I was never at a loss for good vocabulary. And now I hate that about what's going on because I used to be so sharp and I can't sometimes think of the word I'm trying to say. And it drives me insane. And I'm still blaming 
being a mom, but a lot of y'all seem to relate to that. And Francisco, I walk out of the convenience store. We're leaving. I'm hungry. And I thought Remy would want a snack before we drove back. And so I go into the gas station and get a couple things and I come out and Fran is holding the gas pump like he has pulled off with it still attached to his gas tank. (laughs) So, of course, I like to photo, And it's just so funny because I don't know. I've actually done that one time. That's my first. That's your first time. So it's my first. And I was just like closed the door. I was in the store and completely forgot that we were getting gas and drove just pulled forward. Just pulled yeah. forward, and I just hear, black. And I was like, did I hit a pole? I was like, oh, no, I was putting gas, and I forgot to take the hose out. So, yeah, that's where we're at. That's where we're at, though, man. I mean, we're here. This is where we're at, for sure. Uh, I don't, I mean, there's just so many little instances of this on a daily basis. I mean, at least we're not forgetting our child somewhere, you know. But it does make sense how that happens, especially if you have a lot of them. You had a lot of kids. It's hard to keep track, especially if you have like a baby and a bunch of other. Yeah, home alone starting to make sense. Totally. I think about all those rats running around like that's like a Kevin. I mean, yeah, Kevin was just chilling by himself. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. I totally relate to it now, though. It makes sense. But no, it's just hard. It's hard. My brain is just I, I think it's pro- it's proven, right, that you get dumber. More dumb. I think it's proven, but it's still in the down low. People don't want to like, admit it. Yeah, talk, uh, talk about it. Come, loud. join us. Have children. Get dumb. Get more poor, too. Like everything. Yeah, like no money and you're not as smart. Come on over to this yeah. side. <laughs> Feels good. It's amazing. Your relationship's in the shitter. Yeah. Everything about your identity. Yeah, it's so funny. I posted a TikTok the other day that went like mildly viral. Just I've decided to try like doing voiceover, talking, kind yeah. of how we talk to y'all like this and about... um the whole like concept of having another child because I'm surrounded by so many people that are like pregnant again. Like I have a really close friend actually um, that I've had for a while. She didn't live here. She's my friend in Seattle and her and I are similar in so many ways. And I, and she called me uh, not too long ago to tell me she was pregnant again. And I was like, what? Because I didn't even know that was on her radar. I didn't know that she was ready to have another kid. And that's great. I mean, I'm thrilled for her. She's excited. She said that she definitely wanted another one. And so it was very intentional and her, her child's older than Remy, but, um, it just kind of made me like, wow, you know, when you have a friend that you thought you were kind of like on the same page with and like, not I'm not saying this in a bad way. It just makes me like, wow, if anything, I'm like, what's wrong with me? Like, I am so not there, but I got a lot of great feedback from women or a lot of women, a lot of people that were like, I have four and it's a lot, you know, at some point you just give into the chaos and I get that the long-term play there is always about, you know, you're having more kids and siblings and stuff like that. But yeah, I just think I get it deep down. There's part of me, like in theory, I want to have another child, yeah. but it's like the actual, actually doing it, like being pregnant and kind of the expense of everything and the the emotion of everything and how much I worry, by the way. I mean, gosh, do you get over that more with more kids? Does that help? Like, I worry. Do you worry all day about Remy? Like, I constantly think about him. Like, is he okay? I just... I think... Have you gotten better with that? Yeah, no, 100%. I think when I'm not around, I know that he is with someone that takes care. And of course, it's in the he is in the back of my mind the whole entire day. But it has gotten much better. for Yeah. Sure. I just think the anxiety has been really hard to manage for me. I worry about him all the time. I don't know. It's weird. It wasn't as much like that in the beginning. And it is a lot like that now. I have a lot of anxiety over his like well-being. And yeah. I don't know why. I'm not sure. Well, I know why. Because he's irreplaceable. He is. He has become the core part of our like existence. life. Yeah. yeah. So... So if something were to happen to him, it'll be the most dramatic thing that could ever happen. I need, yeah, I couldn't come back from that. I need, I need medicine just to manage it right now. I feel like I need some. Yeah. I am, by the way, did I tell you, I am, I have a meeting with a like functional wellness is what they're calling it now. Kind of a functional wellness you know, biohacking is another word for this, I guess. But um, I've been really tired and 
I know y'all are like, yeah, you have a baby. Not tired like that sleep deprivation because I get good. I get pretty good sleep, but I wake up and I still feel like I have mono or something like that. I've been really lethargic, really tired, just a whole lot of different issues we can go into on another day. But um, I got blood work done and my blood work's actually disappointingly normal in most ways other than low vitamin D, which that could be, you know, a reason. Um, But my blood work is like super normal. And so I sent it off because this is what you do when you find like someone that specializes in functional. Um, I don't even know everything. I'll let you know after I have my meeting and with kind of their recommendations or what else they're capable of. Because, you know, a lot of those places will do. um, It's not like cosmetic, right? As much as it's more about like everything you're putting into your body. So I believe they'll do a lot of those kind of like oxygen. They will let you out through their um, through their. uh the shop, you know how they call it? Like when you go to a museum that you exit to the um, souvenir shop. Yeah. Like you're going to finish your whole wellness biohacking shivang and then you're going to have, well, we have 20% off in Botox. Botox. Sure, fine, great. Right. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Well, why not? They'll upsell you on it. Yeah, but I, uh, but no, I think um, it's more about like a course of more specific, you know, because taking the vitamins, I mean, and I love my ritual vitamins. I've, I am honestly like pretty shitty at taking stuff consistently, obviously, but it'll just be interesting to kind of see more specific recommendations that I don't think it's just supplement. I think sometimes it's about, you know, IVs or injections and things that are like, you know, getting more stuff into your system to help you balance out hormones and things like that. So we'll see what they have to say. But I'm excited. Yes, y'all. By the way, one thing I did learn is that I have been taking a birth control since I had Remy that I had no idea was a birth control they give you after if any of you all are on this. And I do not know why there's not better communication. But my gyno told me that, oh, you're still taking that birth control. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the one I was given. And apparently it has like no estrogen in it and it's safe for breastfeeding. Well, I haven't been best breastfeeding in like a year. And so, uh, they say that you can be really, really tired if you are not taking a birth control without, with estrogen, like estrogen is important to kind of balance out your system. So I just started the new birth control. So maybe that'll be feeling better, better? but no, not yet. Well, soon for sure. I mean, it's been like two days. Like I just got my period and got to start taking it. So yeah. Anyway, but just something like, again, another heads up, like they give you birth control yeah, if you the, want the it. things that they don't guide you through the whole process. They just drop you as a mom. And what is that? You get, I got blood work and stuff. I mean, every day with that IVF and going to the doctor and then you have a baby and it's like, okay, we'll see you in six weeks. You're clear. Like You're carcass. good to have sex. And then, and then, and it's not, I love my guy. No, it's nothing against her at all. This is just America and the process. And it's like, oh, wait, okay, you're due for an annual. And then they're like, and I like had to advocate for myself and be like, can I get my blood work? Can I get my hormones tested? My thyroid? Can I get all of this done? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? So yeah, speak up for yourself if you're not feeling great. I think it's normal to not feel great. I don't feel depressed or anything like that. Like I think I'm past the postpartum stuff, but I, fuck hormones, you know? I just think maybe I'm, maybe it's my age too. I don't know. So I'll let you know anything I find out if it's of any interest to y'all. Yeah, but keep us updated. I will. Thanks. My world is your world. I love it. All right. We'll see you all next week.